hello everyone and welcome back again to my channel my name is gloria and if this is your very first time here i want to say thank you so much for joining us today uh, and for my returning subscribers i want to say thank you so much for always coming back to watch my videos i am so sorry that i've been away for like a few weeks now i did have covid but i'm glad that i'm back to share more information about how you can come to this country canada so without further ado before we get into today's video I want to tell you what you're going to gain from this video so in today's video i'm going to be telling you things that you need to know before you arrive in canada how you need to go about getting your immigration status and what you need to know about the country canada itself before you even make your decision to come to canada there are some things that you know or you already have not known yet um that you are also looking to know i'll be talking about those things today in today's video so Without further ado, let's just get into today's video. So moving to another country can be challenging. If you're immigrating to Canada, this video is going to help you to make a checklist of the things you should do to be prepared for your move. Now, let us start with the fact that English and French are Canada's two official languages. Being able to speak in one of these languages is absolutely essential for you to stay and go about your day-to-day -day activities. We do know that it takes time, energy, and commitment to improve your language skills, but communication skills may be the most important tool that will help you to successfully settle in Canada and find a good job. If you are limited, if you have limited ability in either English or French, so if you have limited ability to speak English or read and write in English and French, you should consider improving your language skills before you come to Canada. So, which language should you learn? Well, it is actually up to you, but it will depend on where in Canada you intend to settle. English is the most common language in majority of the provinces and territories, while French is the main language spoken in Quebec. Quebec is the province here in Canada. But with Canada being a bilingual country, there are also well-established French-speaking communities in places like Ontario, New Brunswick, Manitoba, and most other parts of Canada. And Quebec has a large minority of English-speaking residents. So before you move to Canada, do some research on the place where you would like or live to see um, in where English language, where the language is most widely spoken in your region. So for example, you want to know that is a place, is it a place that can speak English fluently, or is it a place that they are predominantly French speaking? Then that is where you make your decision before you come to Canada. Next, you want to be sure that you have all the proper documents that you and your family will need once you are in Canada. Things like birth certificates, your passport, diplomas, transcripts, medical and dental records, marriage or divorce certificates, your driver's license. I always encourage people to have their driver's license uh, because the first three months when you come to Canada, you can drive for the first three months with your driver's license from your home country. Other documents that you might need when you're coming are adoption records for any adopted children you might have and any other official document. Now, I want to give you a word of advice. It can be much more difficult to get these documents after you have left your country of origin. So now is the time for you to start gathering them before you leave. If any, if any of your family members are immigrating at a later time, make sure you have to bring copies of their documents with you as well in case you need them for any reason prior to your family member's arrival. Another thing you need to do before you leave to, to come to Canada is to translate your documents into either English or French. Make sure that you get a certified translation, which means that you need to choose a translation agency that has a good reputation. The translator would also need to give you an affidavit. This is a document where the, trans uh, the translator has sworn that the translation is actually accurate. The affidavit that you are sending must be sworn in front of a person that is authorized to administer oath in the country where the translator lives. Record the name and contact information of the translation agency in case you need it once you're in Canada. You must keep the original versions of your documents as well. One of the first things after arriving in Canada is of course, you have to find a temporary place to stay until you find long-term accommodation. If it's convenient for you, you can arrange to stay with a family or friend uh, for a few days in Canada. Or if that's not possible, you don't have any family, you don't have any friend, 
search for a hotel or a, 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 a place that an Airbnb in a location that is closest to where you are going to stay. Try to book your hotel or um, Airbnb at least several weeks before you fly into Canada. By booking in advance, you will likely save money and have a better chance of finding available rooms. To help you choose most hotels and Airbnbs, there are various websites on the internet and they have their prices as well. And also photographs of the place, a location of the place, a description of the services they also offer. A word of caution though, beware of very cheap hotels or Airbnb. They may be located in places that are unpleasant for you or have very low standard. One of the most important tasks is preparing to find work in Canada. In order for you to provide for yourself and your family, it depends on your ability to find a suitable job. For many people, the first job in Canada may not be the most enjoyable and satisfying job, but keep in mind that it can take time to build your qualifications and gain Canadian experience before finding the job that you really want. There are a few things you can do before you arrive in Canada. Gather all your educational diplomas and certificates and get letters of reference from your past employers as mentioned be sure to get these documents translated either in English or French, depending on where you're going to stay. Learn how you can get your educational and professional qualifications recognized here in Canada and start the process early. Being accepted to immigrate to Canada does not mean that your education, your work experience and your professional qualifications will automatically be recognized in Canada. There are processes that you have to follow before to make sure that the education, training, and the job experience you obtain in your home country is equivalent to the standards applied to Canadian workforce. The Foreign Credentials Referral Office can also provide you with valuable information on how this process works. As part of this, find out if your profession is regulated or not regulated in Canada. What do I mean by that? So, regulated occupations in fields like healthcare, engineering, skill trades, and others have set standards for how the profession is practiced and require a certificate or a license. The standards can be different across the province in Canada. Most jobs in Canada are not regulated occupations, which don't require a license or certificate in these professions. Requirements vary between different employers, so always be ready to show that you have the education or the experience to do the job. Knowing which category your profession falls, it will help you to determine the requirements for your occupation in the province or territory that you're going to leave. Lastly, take some time to learn about searching and applying for jobs in Canada. There are very, there are very many job search websites in Canada that you can use, including uh, www.gc.ca. If you need to return to school or you have school children, do some research on the educational system here in Canada before you move. Throughout Canada, education is, res is the responsibility of each province or territory, and the various English and French language school boards are publicly funded. There are different schools for children of different ages, but all boys and girls must attend school between the ages of 5, 6, and 16 or 18, depending on where you will live. There may also be private or religious schools in the area where you will settle, and the same rules apply, but these schools could be outside the public system. For most part, the educational systems are similar across the country, but there are some differences between provinces and territories. For this reason, the ministries or departments of education in each province or territory are your main source of information on anything related to education. They all have websites which you can visit to learn about the system before you arrive in Canada. At the very least, take note of the deadlines for applying and registering at the schools, at the colleges and universities, so that when you arrive, it will be easier for you. Another step that you can take to prepare for your arrival in Canada is to buy what we call private health insurance. Canada has a universal health care system, which is designed to provide for citizens and permanent residents of Canada free access to health care, which is paid through the money that is collected through taxes. So, Canadians, Canadian residents, Canadian citizens and permanent residents, because they, are, they have access to health care that is being paid by the government of Canada. But you should be aware that there's a waiting period before you're eligible to benefit from this, even though you're coming to the country as a permanent resident. For that reason, you should buy private insurance to cover you for the first three months when you arrive in Canada. 
This will take care of any emergency medical costs should they arise until you now have access to government health insurance. And if you are unsure whether you'll be eligible to apply for government health insurance once you arrive in Canada, check with the government of the province or territory where you plan to live. There are a few more things that you can do before you leave Canada to prepare yourself. Learn about the province or territory and the city or town where you're going to live. Many of these places have websites with information that will be practical for you to know before you come to Canada. At the same time, get ready for Canada's weather. The climate varies across the country, so please do a bit of research to find out what you could expect upon your arrival. It's also good to start buying some warm clothes to keep you comfortable during the first few days if you're arriving in Canada, during the fall, winter, or spring. You should also take some time to learn about Canada's laws and your rights as well as civic responsibilities. It is important to know that in Canada, every individual is equal under law, without discrimination based on your race, your national or ethnic origin, color, religion, sex, sexual orientation, age, mental or physical disability. The Citizenship and Immigration Canada website, which is a cic.gc.ca, is a one-stop shop for your information. It has a wealth of resources that are tailored to your needs to help you adjust to your life here in Canada. For links into anything I've mentioned in this video, please visit immigration.gc.ca slash settlement. I hope you did enjoy watching this video. If you did, please don't forget to give this video a like and please subscribe to my channel so that I can help other people to learn more about how to come to Canada. And I'll see you in my very next video, which will be again next week. Hopefully that everything goes on well. Uh, until then, please stay safe and bye-bye.